right. Well, I guess so, I can kind of yeah. hear you. Okay, cool. I'll try to be really loud. Twenty-two, and it's a Friday. It's a SketchUp Live day. You're back. Thanks for watching. We got Aaron here. He's gonna do some stylistic, stylized modeling today. Working off the model Tyson made from last week, so it's gonna be a great show today. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, oh boy, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. It's great to see everybody. And without further ado, folks, let's get on with the show, huh? Woo! Take it away, Aaron. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, thank you, Matt. This is the those intros are the reason I tune in. Um, so, <laughs> I hello everybody. I am Aaron Dietzen. Uh, I am going to be doing some modeling for you today, but not alone. Of course, I'm going to be doing it with my buddy Matt Robison. <laughs> hello. We got the sounds too. <laughs> yeah, the man, the myth, the soundboard, uh, Matt Robison. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun one uh hello everybody who's already given a shout out what do we got we got newfoundland hi um, hawaii hi louisville hey scottish borders hi romania hey hello devon uk hello <laughs> lebanon hi colorado hi italy hi <laughs> norway Hello. Halifax. Hey. Monument, Colorado. Hey, hello. And England. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, guys. <laughs> and hi. Um, yeah, hello. so this is going to be a fun one. Uh, in case you didn't tune in last week, which would be a real shame because Tyson made this uh, awesome model. So he made this thing 
um, based on just kind of inspired by uh, some art station artwork we saw. It wasn't SketchUp work. It was done in some other modeler, but it was very uh, cool, stylized. We called it low poly, which I think it it probably is. It's kind of a uh, a clay model, uh, ambient occlusion render kind of thing, but a very stylized version of what a real structure would look like. And we wanted to kind of simulate or sim assimilate simulate. Copy? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, copy's a good word. Aaron, don't try Rip to use... Off. Just stick with two syllables, okay, Aaron? All right, so <laughs> <laughs> we want to try to make something similar to that. Uh, so he got started with it, and this is this is what we got. Very cool, uh, fun, fun model to start with. Got some shingles on here, got some bricks. Uh, but we're going to go in and we're going to kind of add to this. We're going to add some more detail. We're going to add some more pieces and it's going to be a fun model. I'm, I'm excited about this. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, for sure. I dropped the link uh, to the art station site of the original artist. Um, so check that out. Um, and you can also peep the forum thread for, uh, I believe Tyson posted his link to his model there too. So he did. in case you want to follow along. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I definitely watched last week. It was a super cool model and a lot of interesting ways to do stuff that's you know, obviously, and Tyson mentioned this a couple times in the stream, SketchUp is made for being precise and, you know, traditionally you want to be like architecture very, uh, you know, exact. And then yeah. this is more kind of fantasy storybook, you know, sort of, um, I don't know exactly how you, like it's from the Shire or something. Yeah, yeah. something a little fantasy, more, uh, that works. Yeah, it's fantastical. It, it's kind of funny because... Uh, you know, there's a lot of things we do with computers, and I know there's somebody's gonna say that, that there's software that does that. There is software that does this, but it's a lot easier with a computer to make something that's exact than it is to make something that's random. So there there are algorithms out there that generate random numbers and polygons and all that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, making straight lines is a lot easier from a computer than like something that's flowing and natural that was created by nature. So. Uh, it's kind of fun to try to do these kind of models and just uh, see where you can, you know, intentionally mess stuff up. It's kind of what we're, I'm good at it. Well, I'm, I'm going to have fun. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Push it to the breaking point. Let's get some, That's like, some funky realness in here. Some, uh, let's break some asymmetry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Without further ado, let's hop in and get, get to work on this model. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> so. I'm looking at this. Uh, so we have, this is what, what Tyson put together. He created some awesome boulders, which are maybe some of my favorite parts here. We'll probably actually use more of these actually uh, around this structure, but we do have a bunch of different variations here to work with, which is very cool. Uh, here on the model itself, we have a couple of blocks, just general pieces to work from here. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he actually did some work with some random randomizing some shingles, some bricks back here. That was and that was really cool. Tyson used a handful of extensions that uh, I've seen before. I haven't used some of the ones he looked at, but it was really cool to watch him generate this. These uh, so he had this couple different kinds of shapes of shingles, and to have them you know randomly placed and overlap and. It was, it was very cool. That was it was that was my favorite part of the live stream. Um, yeah. Oh, time. absolutely. And that's that's the way I try to approach something like this too. It's like if I can like be a little bit lazy and get something to, even if it's just trial and error. You mm -hmm. you know, click put in the wrong numbers a couple of times and it looks weird. You know, it's a easier way than going through and individually rotating each one and scaling oh, yeah. it to be um, to be random. So absolutely. yeah, I, I thought that part was really cool too. That was neat because that's not something. That I normally do. I don't normally go in and and yeah. I'm, well, you guys know. You watch me model <laughs> regularly. <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of of random stuff. So uh, a lot of the stuff we end up doing like things like machine parts, very very precise or buildings. You know, this a room is supposed to be this big, not this big. Yeah, ish. Um, <laughs> it may get built that way, but in general, <laughs> the design phase that's not where you want to go. Yeah, this is the ideal version. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it'll perfect. never be as perfect as it is in the computer. Real mm. world's kind of a pain that way. <laughs> All right, so uh, I figure we don't have a hard this. 
we're, we're experimenting this month. Uh, if you watched last month in January, uh, we created a, a model railroad station or model railroad. So we had, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the whole setup, the landscape and everything, some tracks, did a bunch of different cars, some scaled down buildings. Uh, that was kind of our goal was to get that whole setup. This month, we're doing a little bit different. We're, uh, we're passing a model back and forth, uh, which we did a little bit last week, but it was really just to say like, this is finished, here you go, put it in your model. This time we're actually taking this model and sharing it back and forth. So I don't have a specific uh, amount of work that I'm saying like, I have to get this much done or have to get it this far. What I'm thinking in my head will be good to do is uh, detail out like this, this piece right here, and then mm -hmm. detail out the front entry. If I have time, maybe do these pieces over here too. But I do wanna get in and get some of these doors, windows, there's some wood framing on here. Uh, I wanna get all that detail into the model uh, today if I can. So that's kind of, that's my goal right now. We'll see where it goes. Nice, sounds like a good plan. Yeah. You know, play Roger. Everything always goes according to plan here on SketchUp Live, so it's exactly how it should happen. Yeah. Oh, we've got it down to the minute here. This is all scripted, by the That's way. That's right. Everything That's right. here. I'm going to sneeze in about three minutes and 28 seconds, so keep an eye out for that. Watch um, for the pepper cue. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so i got a couple things I'm going to change right off the bat. <laughs> Throw <laughs> no. in shade. No, nothing. No, actually, this the model is great. I really, I was looking through it. I like it a lot. Um, I'm gonna come in and make a couple style changes real quick, just because I like to start. I like to model a couple things. I'm gonna get rid of profiles. I don't want those extra lines right now. Um, that makes it does a couple things for me. It I like the look of the single lines better than the heavy lines at the edge. That's just a personal thing, uh, but it also does help with performance. We have a lot of components, and we're gonna add a bunch more right now and uh, performance will be an issue with this model eventually. So not having profiles actually makes SketchUp run quite a bit quicker. The other thing I'm gonna do, I know this is Tyson's default template, but I gotta, I gotta get on a ba white background. I, I can't, oh. yeah, I can't, I can't model like, it's too gloomy, it's too gloomy. <laughs> <laughs> this does look like it would be in like a uh, you know Scottish Highlands, very kind of foggy, overcast day. But, probably so. It probably makes a lot of sense, but uh, I maybe my, for the final render, not for this. Yeah, I'm just working. I'm I'm in the light. I'm I'm a, I'm a light kind of guy. That's what I say. <laughs> Bring on the light. You did have a question about your T-shirt. Um, oh yeah. Transom asked, yeah, if it was your uh, login T-shirt. <laughs> you know. I, I have a lot of lot of uh, shirts that have puns or jokes or something like that, but my favorite are the ones where people try to figure out what it means. Like, hmm, it's a log, and then people lead down things and they ask, and I usually say something like, oh, this? Yeah, it's a log. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the banana duct taped to the wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have one with a... Meaning a squirrel holding a switchblade and somebody's like is that commentary and i said no it's a squirrel with a switchblade <laughs> barry also asked where uh, you get your shirts where do you get your these beautiful beautiful shirts uh i usually just shop around i find the place i can buy them as cheap as possible usually so roadkill t-shirts is one that i really like they have some fun shirts there you'll find if you start sh looking at these sh sites online that they have variations of the same shirt on all different sites. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's not not really one where it's like, oh, they have the best content. The content's pretty much the same on every site, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when you get the, the squirrel switchblade, you know, that disseminates among yeah. all t-shirt sites pretty quickly because it's right. so so popular. Yeah, it just, it does, that's, that's it, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna hop in here and get started with this. I'm, I'm bringing this roof up off the ground. Uh, and I, I am, I have the art station link open in a window over here on this, on my other computer or other, my other monitor. So if I'm glancing, it's because I'm just taking a look over there. I'm not trying to copy it exactly, but I do like the layout. The way it's set up is pretty cool. It does look like they have kind of a two story house. So, uh, Tyson put these nice bricks in here, but I think I'm going to come in and say that they're only going to go 
this high for the entry and then above that we're going to we're going to switch over to wood framing so this is about the height where first floor and second floor break apart um i can see that from naraj's height there too yeah that which makes yeah totally also makes props sense. to you for fixing the intro slide i know sumo la for a couple of weeks after 2022 came out but uh we're up to date now that's right got everything uh Video, video team maybe lags behind uh, production occasionally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what what would video be without lag, you know? That's right. We're all used to it. Video lags. <laughs> well, that sounds terrible for us. I don't like that. All right. I'm going to take this right here. And uh, actually, I'm going to take that. Oh, is this? This is a piece. I'm going to copy that. Copy that. <laughs> Wasn't even intending for that, but uh, that worked, yeah, that that worked, worked out pretty great. well. <laughs> I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to grab it by the middle point. I'm going to drop that middle point right here. And then I'm going to adjust it and make it hang out a little bit by bringing out the green axis. I'm going to drop it down onto the roof by going on the blue axis just, just a touch. That's too much. That's too much. There we go. Something like that. And I'm okay with that board being the same size, even though it's a smaller roof, having that ridge beam be the same. That works for me. Uh, this guy right now, if I select this, this is a solid group and not a component, which is cool because that means I can come in and I can do something like... Uh, find a spot where I want to cut it off. Right, because uh, people who don't watch every week, but uh, hopefully there's some of you new folks out there. If you're new, let us know. But uh, a component will reflect the changes like it's an identical copy of the exact same thing. So when, when Aaron says this is a group, that means he can change it without making changes to the, the other one. So he can make this shorter without the, the big one up top changing. Yes, exactly. Uh, and also, I have, to, I have to read this comment out. Uh, right. But I hope it doesn't go to your head too much. Paul says, you're my idol. Aww. I learn a lot every time I'm watching you draw on SketchUp. Thank you very much for showing how to use these apps. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I, that's, I mean, I, I don't want to... I don't want to sound like... Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully so. This is why we do it. We do this so we can hang out. It's a fun way to spend a Friday afternoon or saturday morning or evening or whatever time it is for you but uh <laughs> you know it's not structured learning like we have in some of our other videos or we have on sketchup campus but our goal here is to kind of show you how to use potentially how you could use sketchup uh and uh it's good to hear that somebody's experiencing that somebody's actually learning something that's that's awesome yeah good to hear maybe one day we'll have you on as a guest modeler paul there you go and you watch all the tutorials you'll be able to uh right to the big leagues that's right Correct. So, um, and Gilbert, uh, just real quick, asks, what does it take to work at SketchUp? Um, and you just need to apply. Uh, there's a couple open positions. I'll try to find the, the open positions uh, link on the Trimble site for uh, for folks who are interested in that question. But uh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, that's good. Um, I'm just, so just to tell you what I'm doing, I'm, I copied this entire roof and just dropped it right here. And then what I'll do is I'll come through and selectively trim this down because I don't I don't need all of that. But rather than drawing this from scratch, uh, since Tyson did such an awesome job, I can just kind of leverage his work. Just make sure it doesn't stick through the other side too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So something like like that. Awesome. And now that I, now that that works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it over to here, and I'm going to scale it to negative one like this. Minus one, enter, and then I will rotate that onto that roof as well. Beauty, like it was made for it. Yeah. Um, so Tyson did put a little bit of a curve on this front face. I'm going to do something similar, I think. I'm going to go ahead and grab them into context here. I'm going to grab, go 
turn my outside stuff on and then I'm going to put an arc from here up to take this across like this. Now here, I'm going to draw a line so I can reference it exactly. Here we go. An arc from there down to there. Whoop, I missed. Whoa. A little too much caffeine this morning. Get the jitters? I guess so. The perk and the uh, downside of being the, one of the only people in the office is you have unlimited coffee supply. Just that is true. Coffee machine keeps flowing. No line, you know, get right in there. That's not, oh, it's not. In, oh, that's not on the face at all. Come on, man. Right, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to draw that arc again from here to here. I'm gonna try to stay on axis. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay on that uh, perpendicular line right there, and I'm gonna bring my reference back on. I'm gonna have it come up right to there. All right, now I'm gonna turn this off. Still doesn't look like something. Looks like something still didn't stay. Yeah, it's out here. I'm not gonna try to figure what I did wrong. I'm just going to fix the problem. So I'm going to take that, rotate it along this line and grab it and have it come down flush to the face. Does that look better? Uh, from here, it looks better. Something's not right. All right. Never mind. I'm not going to do that. Looks fine to me. Abort. <laughs> Abort. Abort. Pull out. <laughs> uh, okay uh, i'm gonna have to do something because i don't i don't like this gap right here so i think what i might do instead is just do something like this get rid of this grab that turn everything back on scale that so grab the middle go that fill, fills up that space a little bit better i'm also going to yeah. grab these and have them hang out on the green axis just a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. That'll work for now. Yeah. All right, um, you know what I should probably do at this point, being that I'm like 15 minutes in? Change. That's the one. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, so we have some additional framing around here. I have kind of a, I want to, I want this to look like it's framed out in wood. It's just kind of like big chunky log kind of thing. So I'm going to come in with a rectangle, put it in by the center and get, get me a, a nice good size like that ish. I'll pull that back it out a little bit yeah i like the way that looks so one of the things that uh so i'm going to grab that and make it a component i'm going to call it i don't know i don't remember, i don't know what uh tyson's got in here so i'm going to call it a support beam pretty sure he's got component one component two component three component four. Oh, he wouldn't do something like that no <laughs> No, no, I refuse to believe that. <laughs> Everyone always names their components. Don't at me. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Something's who, going on. Who clicked the abort button? Oh, no. Abort. Get out of here, abort man. <laughs> uh, well, I can use this weird. time to... Uh, somebody talked or somebody asked about... Akin asked, what's the controller on the left? So that is the... It's a 3D mouse. It's a Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. Uh, it's not necessary for using SketchUp, but uh, you know, it makes the model move a little bit smoother. Nice for presentation and also uh, sort of takes you to the next level for uh, being able to move and like select commands at the same time and just model faster. Um, and better. So yeah, like I said, not necessary. And there's a couple of different models that you can pick from, but um, Aaron has this one. It has like extra, um, you know, keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that on it. So um, yeah, check it out if you're interested. 
That's great. I appreciate that because uh, I don't have to do the announcement myself anymore. You just you took care of it for me. That's great. <laughs> I need to get a recording of it. That's right. seriously. <laughs> That's one of those questions that comes up every single time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a cool, cool it's, thing. It's and you make thing. it look easy too. I, I get my hands on one of those and I'm like, woo, woo, flying all over the place. It takes a little bit of practice. I will be totally honest with you. All right. Uh, so we have this beam sticking out. And I was debating, I don't want to go too cartoony with this because one of the things I was thinking of doing is coming in and like, you know, doing something like this where I put an arc and then do a follow me to give myself a beam that like comes out and, and gets big. But I think I'm going to run into problems connecting and it's a little bit too much. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take it and I'm just going to round the corners over with, with uh, Fredo Corner. So Fredo Corner is an extension. Um, it let's see where is where is it at? It'll be here. Oh, you could use the uh, the search function. Oh, that's I'm true. Trouble. I don't. I don't. Uh, let's see. Chop corner. Um, that's not the right one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the actual <laughs> command is called. Um, okay. Well, you don't so, have to. I'll look it up the first time, and then I'll use search next time. Fredo corner round. So let's see if I if I click here and I type round. Ah, there it is. Bingo. Cha-ching. Oh. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll be honest oh, with you about something. <laughs> I'm running a new version, a new install of 2022, and I have not... Uh, loaded very many extensions into it. In fact, at this point, I had solid tools and selection toys were the only things in here. So I grabbed a handful of extensions like this morning, and I didn't even think about going through and, and uh, making sure they're all licensed. So instead, here's what I'm going to do. Let's say, let's say you, you want that nice rounded over corner, that low poly look, but you don't have Fredo corner installed. What do you do? You do this. All right, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to knock a corner off. So I'm going to come in uh, a specific, so like a half inch there, half inch there, and then that. I want to do that on all the corners. It's not, a, it's not a square, so it's not the same on all the sides. So I'm going to come over here and do the same thing over here. And then I can grab here, here. And I'm going to draw a line down the middle real quick and just take those and rotate them to the bottom. And I'll grab one of these, push pull it all the way back, and then double click, double click. I'm putting, spend a little time on this because I want my plan is to reuse this same shape over and over again. Now to get a rounded look on the front, I'm gonna offset this. So offset this a half an inch. And I'm gonna take this now, and I'm going to move it on the green axis, half an inch too. All right, so that gives me that that kind of faceted look. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this end real quick. Uh, I will offset, push, or no, move. All right, so there, I accidentally did an extra offset there because I have that base selected. All right, so that gives me that rounded look. And all I got to do now is to really knock it down is to just smooth that out. So I'll just turn on soft and smooth, crank it till it all goes away. All right, there we go. So now I got at least that look. It's not totally rounded over corner, but it look it, it matches the rest of the uh, aesthetic here. So I'll take that piece now. And from this corner, I'm going to Option, copy that. And uh, I have some things I have to decide here. Do I want to try to overlap it to get that kind of look? Or do I want to have it like tucked inside like that? Actually, I think hmm. I kind of like it like that. So I'm just going to. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to make this one a little bit. Again, just to kind of keep it organic-y looking. I don't want these all to look like they're copied the same, so I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. If 
But that gives me the feel that support underneath there. I like that. And I'll take this one more time and I will rotate it vertical, a copy of it, vertical like that. And same thing, I'll bring that out like that. I'm gonna squish it down so it sits on top. I can grab a, the scale handle even though I can't see it. That's kind of a fun, fun thing to do. Amaze your friend at parties with that trick. All right. Reaching through the wall, you're That's like right. a ghost. Pull it, pull it to you. And then we're just gonna take that up like that. Actually, I think what I might do, I'm gonna take these guys right here, option copy those up and give myself a little, little something extra to sit on up here. There we go. And then I'll scale this up to the bottom. It's important yes. to have a good support system. You know? That's right. Live and die by the support. Yeah, I like that. That looks cool. Um, grab this guy and this guy. So something that I do realize, which you guys know that I'm not oblivious to the fact that as I'm scaling these, I am causing some stretching to the softened corners I made, uh, but they're so small, it's only half an inch. So if I double that, stretch the beam twice as long, it's still only going to be an inch. So uh, the distortion that's happening to the corner is not a, a big deal, in my opinion, as far as, you know, how I'm going about moving these pieces around. This guy gets good. Let's get, let's get brought up a little bit. All right. Looking cool. Hey, I should save. Save it up. Done. Nice. All right. Um, Brad said something about uh, going to go on a limb and say this is a woodworking term that I'm not uh, familiar with. Throw in some hand hewn adzy mark texturing on the beam faces. That's what I say. So. Yeah, I think I think you should swing by a dollar store and get two of those. Okay. <laughs> I know what hand hewn means. Um, I can't. I, I I don't got a lot of adds it adds it. I looked it up and it's an antique tool. Mm. Originally used for hewning timbers. You and... know, my good buddy Tyson's a bit of a woodworker, so uh, I'll let him do that next week. Yeah, that I'm thing, sure he'll that thing that I don't him. know what it is. <laughs> Get out the ancient hand tools. All right, moving on. Let's get this window. Let's get a window in here. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, let's see. How do I want to do this? I want to put something like that. That's that's low enough that it's it's yeah that'll work. Uh, put an arc like that. I'm gonna stretch that a little bit so it's yeah like that. I'm gonna put a window something like that, and I'll put that in the center by grabbing by middle point, and then uh, find the middle point of this beam. Uh, that's actually something I want to I want to mention. A lot of people get hung up on getting stuff exactly right when you first start. It's okay to just draw something, put in a component, and then line it up afterwards. There's a lot of times where I don't know exactly where something's gonna go, but I know what it looks like. And then I come back and adjust it afterwards to uh, uh, be where it's supposed to sit. All right, so what I wanna do with this window is similar to the detail I got here with these blocks out front, I wanna put a uh, big block, small block kind of thing all the way around like that. Uh, and then maybe like a bigger brick sill sticking out here. So, uh, Let's see, uh, I'm gonna start, we'll do the bottom first. Maybe I'll come out a little bit further for the bottom, something like that. Uh, we had the same question come up last week, but uh, Marcus in the chat asks, who's the best modeler, you Tyson or Justin Geis? And um, I was, 
Well, I'll speak for myself when I say really the only chance I get to see like head to head modeling is uh, at 3D Basecamp. Uh, we do this, some, this thing called the SketchUp Shootout, which is sort of like Pictionary, but it's like kind of speed modeling uh, a thing and then trying to get to the crowd to guess your model before uh, the other person's model. So uh, as far as a speed modeling context, 3D Basecamp, which is happening in Vancouver at the end of September this year, um, 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com would be a good uh, place to uh, test those theories out. What, whoever you, whoever is your, um, is your hero out of those three, uh, you can <laughs> put them to the test. But uh, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. What, what would you uh, say to who's the best modeler out of you three? Man, it's it's so hard and in some ways subjective, but me. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> no, uh, I I mean, I, I think Tyson really called it out. I think uh, one thing I will say for absolute certain is, you know, Justin creates production models for a living. I mean, like he, he's, he does actual design of stuff that gets built for JE Dunn. Um, Tyson and I don't, we're, we're not paid designers at this point. Um, so I think if the question you have is like, who can crank out real world designs that are actually going to be usable? I don't think that Tyson, and I have a leg to stand on against Justin. Justin like does this for real. Um, but I mean, if we're just talking about like having some fun and like, you know, getting a model out quick. Uh, yeah, I agree with Matt. I think 3D Basecamp is a great spot to find out exactly who 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 that is. Um, and if you come to 3D Basecamp, well, that's weird. That's a weird thing that just happened there. Uh, if you do come to 3D Basecamp, we will be doing the shootout. And you can actually come in and like uh, challenge people to model against you. So that uh, could be a thing you could you could do. Two modelers enter, one modeler leaves. That's exactly how it works out. Blood on the mouse. That's uh, it's blood, a lot of fun. Mouse, blood, mouse, blood, mouse, blood, mouse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good time though for it, for real. Uh, yeah, the sketchup can... shootout is only a small part of the fun at 3d base camp. Of course, it's the, uh, you know, the entire sketchup community, all the, the best of the best get together and, you know, you got the presentations from people, but you also just the community and meeting people that are, you know, doing stuff that's outside of what you're doing and seeing, cool stuff getting inspiration yeah like i said building that community and then there's also fun too there's the big party that we do and um vancouver obviously is a cool place so uh yeah if you yeah. are interested we'd love to see you there because we'll both be there so that, that's right there's nowhere else i'd rather be um so i'm just kind of randoming up this this thing right here, this this window block windowsill. Might be the first random thing I've seen you do <laughs> this uh, this stream. So that's good. So I want to I want to make it look, you know, not the same. Uh, can't round my corners over. Ugh, I blame myself. All right, there we go. That's good. And I'm gonna grab the front of all that and soften that up. Do you think it's maybe because you don't have like the library file, you know, the Fredo lib? No, actually the new, so the new version, uh, Fredo corner or no. Round corner? Round, no, Fredo corner is a licensed software where Fredo corner was a free one. I have a license for it. Um, I haven't authorized it in 22. So gotcha. That one's on me. All right. No prop. Can't win them all. That's right. Unless it, we're talking about SketchUp shootouts, then I, can't say I've won every one I've ever been in, but oh, burn! Just saying. That's all the all the competitors. <laughs> all I don't actually. Out there. I'm I'm terrible at talking <laughs> crap or or what, however you want to say it, talking stuff. But uh, it's it's mostly fun. I mean, I did get called out. 
I don't know if, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was. Was it Karsten? <coughs> Called me out last year. Brought you up on stage? Well, I was on stage actually officiating MC. the shootout, and he walked up and I said, who do you want to challenge? And he goes, well, you. Boom. I think I had to model a bird. Yeah. That's a tough one. It was it was a tough one. All right. Uh, I'm going to... Again, I, I feel like I'm doing this very different from how Tyson did it, which I kind of like. I like the idea of, uh, you know, not doing the same thing. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of leaning into doing this a way that I know he probably didn't, didn't do it and wouldn't do it. But... Uh, yeah, so what I want to do is I just took took an offset here, made it basically a little shape that goes around the window, and then I'm going to break this into a bunch of smaller pieces. And then, let's see, let's go here. And Yeah, I'll leave that one long because that one's going to disappear into the bottom. All right, so if I look at that, that's kind of, the, yeah, I like that. That's what I want to have pop out. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll pull each of these pieces out a different amount so they don't, whoops, what happened there? Nope. Um, Scorp in the chat says, ironically, this is actually fairly high poly. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I feel like we use the, the low poly term sort of loosely, maybe. Yeah, I this think is more stylized. Stylized like. modeling, I think, was what we said we're really doing. But uh, you know, the marketing horse had left the stable by the time we decided that, and uh, <laughs> we were just kind of stuck with it. We have done some live models of uh, higher poly modeling in the past. That has happened, um, or I'm sorry, low poly modeling in the past. So if that is something you're dying dying to see more of, we do have some models where we, we kind of showed some of that. All right, so I'm going to try to keep the inside of the windowsill kind of smooth and just come around here and maybe bump out some of these, the bigger blocks. This one, of course, is not going to want to bump out. So what I'm going to do instead is just kind of grab a line, throw it right here, maybe be a little bit intentionally not parallel and make it look like it's standing out further than it actually is. Oops. Something like that. Yeah, I like this. I like the way this is going. Nice. I like it. Okay, I like it, Picasso. Picasso. <laughs> this is a little cube cubism sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe. Um, cool. I'm gonna take these out a little more. All right, and then just to get that kind of that rock or that, that rounded over, I'm gonna do the same thing. Where I'm just gonna offset each of these by about the same amount, so about that much. Whoa, that did not Whoa. go the same much. The same much, the same amount. Uh, double clicking with offset says use the exact same offset as last time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these faces at once. Saving time. And I'm going to pull them out on the green axis and kind of get that, get that brick thing going on like that. So a couple of these I can already tell are going to have a little bit of a problem. Uh, something weird. Oh, no, it, it can't turn out OK. This is, this is not what I want. I look at my hidden. No. Sometimes autofold does an amazing job, and sometimes autofold doesn't do what I expect it to do, but that's okay. All right, so if I wanted to, I could come in here and do what I did before, like offset some of these pieces and move them around a little bit to give myself a little more randomness. Um, I'm not going to... Oh, that, that's not the one to move. Uh, you know, give myself... So, so kind of break this up a little bit, but... Uh, I'm not going to spend too much energy on that right now. That looks good. I'll grab that and, again, soften that out. Yeah, that's a pretty good looking window. Um, I think it fits in pretty well. Uh, in 
the model we are taking inspiration from, there's actually a lattice through, through this whole section here. So what I think I will do I'm in here, um, Uh, we do have a question in the chat here. How do we run old plugins on a newer version of SketchUp? Uh, there's a there's a possibility that you don't. Um, if the developer has updated, then you're good to go. There is a good chance. So if you're looking at an older extension, uh, and you're looking at like Extension Warehouse or or the plugin store or something like that. You might see an extension that says, you know, uh, only good through 2019 or something like that. There's a good chance that that will still run on uh, newer versions. So you, you might be able to just download it and be good to go. Uh, if that's not the case, if you actually get an extension that just doesn't work, then it doesn't work. We do We try not to do it a lot, but there are occasionally breaking changes in the code uh, we change versions of Ruby every couple few years. Um, I think once or twice there was some stuff, some backend stuff for like certifying extensions that caused issues where if the, the developer didn't upgrade for that, then they couldn't work on forward versions. Um, so that does happen occasionally, uh, but for the most part, we try not to make that the case. So I'm saying that to say a listing page might say this only works on 2019, but it might work on 20 through 22, no problem. On the other hand, it might say it only works on 19, and that might be true. If that's the case, you can try reaching out to the developer to see if they're going to update it or something like that. But there's nothing, there's not really a way for you to kind of trick it into working. And there's not a way that we can go in and make an old extension work. So yeah, said all that to say, I don't know. <laughs> No, yeah. there's there's real there's possibility that you can't get it to work is is really unfortunately the the real issue there. Roger. All right. Yeah, thanks for that detailed uh, explanation. Yeah, Appreciate you it. Um, I am creating. So this is a slightly bigger than the window outline. I'm going to take this piece right here. And I'm going to pull it out a little bit like that and make it a group. All right, then I'm going to find the middle of this piece. Where should the middle be? The middle should be right about here. There we go. I'm going to copy over like that. That was not a full nine degrees. That was some weird angle. All right, let's try that again. This is this is what people learn from. They're like, oh, don't do what he did. And whatever it takes to learn. Teaching is a dangerous business, man. All right, there we go. And I'm going to take that piece, make a copy of that, slide it over that far. Do it 20 times. All right, so I've created at that point something of a grid. I move that over. That overlaps. It's really hard to see, but that does overlap that pretty good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save. Smart. I'm going to grab all these pieces. I'm going to go to Tools and hit Outer Shell. See if I can get a, a good shell going. There's some different ways to do this. Uh, I'm trying to find the quickest way to create a solid, and that seemed to work pretty well. That was good. All right, now with this, um, I'm gonna come into this piece. Ooh, I'm gonna do this first. I grab that arc and weld it. When I weld it, now say I have this smooth piece instead of that faceted chunk that was there before. Okay, cool. Now we'll take this piece and this piece, and then I will go to, I always save anytime I use uh, certain tools, solid tools, and I'm going to get the intersection. 
Mm. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know if that was the right one. First try. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Crowd's going wild. Thanks, crowd. All right. And I'm just going to push that into that. There we go. Nice. All right. I'm going to actually scale this brick out. Ooh. Whoa. 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 Not that far. Hold on. Slow down, bucko. How about 1.4? That's better. And then we'll bring this guy out. Just, just a touch. All right. Cool. That's a cool little window. I like it. All right. Moving on. Um, it looks like uh, there's a little bit of a like a, a hook out here with a lantern hanging over it, which is kind of cool. I think we could create a detail like that and reuse it through this model too. It'd be kind of fun. So uh, start with start with this little beam. We'll just kind of get a, a little rectangle smaller than the the normal wood piece that we have. Pull that out, something like that, and then maybe we'll just have like a hook hanging down, and then we'll put the lantern on it. Uh, I'll do that by draw a line back like that, drop a line down there, and throw a circle on it. And I'll do something like that, and then, whoops. I'll do another arc from here to here. For those interested in what uh, Aaron's looking at for reference when he's looking off the screen, I put the link in the description to uh, the original model that we're that we're looking for or looking at here. Thank you. All right, something like that. Actually, I could probably drop that arc way down. See, it is low poly. That's right. <laughs> What about now? All right. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm breaking these pieces, but they are still controllable. I can still modify that. There we go. That looks better. I'm going to weld that. Tools. Follow me. And actually, before I follow me, let's drop this. There's no reason for this to be 24. We can drop like eight. Get out of here with your super high detail. I know. Come on, man. What are you thinking? I don't need you. All right. Something like that. That's going to work. All right. I'm going to grab all of that. Make it a group. Come in here. Get my same thing. Grab that. Pull it out a little bit. I'll drop that down. Of that cool i like that i like that that's pretty cool um and now we need to throw a lantern on here the lantern on the screen is about this big so i'm gonna get i'm gonna get free with this i'm gonna start with a circle again lower poly so i'm gonna say like an eight-sided circle some would call it a smoothed octagon some some they're out there yeah they exist i didn't make them up domenico in the chat from rome hello there hey. hello oh. all right so this has kind of a has kind of a shape like something like that a little extreme I'll scale this back. Let's bring it back in. So kind of a shape like that. And then the bottom kind of does. Oh, it's pretty hard. It's like I said, it's hard to see. Something like that, maybe. And then there's glass inside that. And then a, a hook on the top. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to go tools. Oops, I didn't. Follow me. Oops. 
tools, follow me. I'm gonna grab those two pieces. Make that a group. And then separate from that, I'm gonna do the glass piece. What happened there? All right. Tools, follow me. So there's a little lantern type thingy. Um, I made this separate pieces because I think I want to play around with the shape a little bit. So maybe I'll come in here. I like these pieces, but maybe I'll drop that down a little bit and then grab this and scale it and stretch it out. Oh, it's a little more lantern-like. Um, and then I got to put kind of a a hook sort of thing here. So I'm going to model this out of context intentionally. So by out of context, I mean I'm not actually in that group that this is a part of. And then I'll throw an arc. How about like a four-sided arc? Uh, something like that. Oops, that was not that erase. Push pull, silly. All right, there we go. And then I'll grab this this and this offset it and then push that through all right so that i kind of feel like gives me a pretty good stylized ish low poly e thing uh it's a little big so uh maybe we'll make that whole thing into one group which i can then Actually, I want to make that a component. All right, bring it back out here, and we'll just keep scaling that down. I want to make sure it's not like, you know, the size of Niraj. So, <laughs> it's a it's a big lamp, yeah, but not like, you know, not, not people size. All right, there we go. I'll grab that by this piece, stick it on the hook, which now seems comically oversized. All right, I got to split the difference here. <laughs> we have to, we have to Extra it. safe on there. It's not going anywhere That's... with the Gigantor hook. That's right. Wow. All right, we'll go a little bit bigger. Super size. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's, re that's, that's reasonable. All right, I'm going to grab this and this and make that another component. Uh, we're getting nested, baby. That's right, we're deep. We are several layers deep. That way I could grab that piece and I can throw it near the front door when I get that on there. Which, let's do right now. All right, so a couple things happen in the front door here. I'm gonna grab one of these beams and you're coming with me. Your, a copy of you is coming with me, of course. So, yeah, I wouldn't take you. That's right. I don't, I don't want you. I want, I want a clone of you. I'm going to drop that right there. And then uh, it's going to sit something like that. Um, and then I think what I want to do, you know, as we uh, follow this plan exactly and make things up, I think I'm going to make a copy of that right here. Something like this. Bring this over here and then pull that across. What are the odds that that uh, hits a kind of a weird spot, but Maybe we'll drag these guys down just ever so slightly. That we works. just bend that one out of the way. Isn't it supposed to be whimsical? That's right. <laughs> Whimsy wood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That looks good. I like the way that that, I like the way that turned out. Um, okay. That looks good. And then what I'll do is I'll grab these two right here and I'm going to Flip a copy of them over like that, and then we'll just drag that down vertically 
right on top of this. Yeah, that goes I'm a little bit late here, but you had a couple of calls in the chat to make the lantern big. So maybe the one you make up top out front, you can make a supersize overtime lantern. You don't think that's big enough? You don't think that's that's let's see. If if Niraj, Niraj is what? Like 510. This lantern is currently a foot and a half. It's got a lot of lighting to do. We, we, we can go bigger. I'll go bigger. I don't care. I'll do whatever. I'll... <laughs> cool, yeah. I don't even have to worry about or... gravity or price or anything. I'll do whatever. Do whatever, you know. We're right. free here, baby. That's right. Big lantern, big lantern, big lantern, big lantern. Yay! All right, so no, 40% added to that lantern. That's uh, a hands. lot. That's a lot of lantern. All right. Whoever's um, sleeping in that room right there is gonna have a tough time because it's gonna be so bright. Sorry. That's that's probably why they put in the lattice because they're like, I need to get some way to keep some of this light out. Block it. See, we got a story going. That's right. There's Maybe a, you got a story. Thing happen. All right. Um, I'm gonna. There's a couple pieces of of geometry that are happening right here. So right here, there's kind of a window box that sits out up above with a uh, rather steep roof and some small uh, little windows here. So that'll sit there and then those, these beams will come around and support that underneath. And then underneath that is where we actually have the door. So I'm gonna try to use these same beams, same, same spot. Uh, Flip those around like, like that, and then you could scale or just squash them back into the wall. That seems that seems doable. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll just uh, come from there straight over to here. Yeah, I did not make that centered at all. Hold up, hold up. Let's make that a group. Part of the whimsy, baby. That's true. <laughs> I can't blame everything on whimsy. Something's eventually <laughs> going to have to use a snap point. Okay, maybe fantasy or magic or... There we go. That's that's where... Okay. Not not too far off. Not too far off. Take that back to there. Yes, I like this. Okay. This guy's going to get scaled back. This guy's going to get scaled back. I like it. All right, we'll grab in the chat. We got Ralph from Virginia. Hey, Ralph, thanks for thanks for calling in. Thank you. What do you got, Ralph? Ralph, Virginia, yellow. Go ahead. <laughs> we should do a call-in show. Maybe we do like a morning zoo. We have the sound effects. That is true. I think that'd be we fun. Just, I think uh, need more like farm animal different. sound effects, though. We we need our own we need our own spin on it like uh, I don't know I got nowhere to take that I should have just shut up and said yep morning zoo <laughs> does nothing. anybody in the chat have ideas for an original <laughs> a morning zoo but SketchUp be an original that's right just outsourcing our creativity that's how we do it here <laughs> oh boy creativity by uh, by group. Yeah. That's what I thought about. Right. Crowdsourcing is a positive way to say it. Oh. Um, so I will say that uh, I am embracing the whimsy in that I'm kind of doing my best to like look over the fact that this stuff's not actually lining up with the corners and things. It's just kind of kind of there. I don't know if yeah, I like it. I, think that's... I don't know if I like it. I hey, that's part of it. And if it's not part of it, it's Tyson's problem next week. That's your, oh, nice. The beauty of the model handoff. Time to model some crap. Uh, Ralph says uh, he's been watching for several months, and oh. you folks are great. Thanks, Ralph. Appreciate that. Good to hear it. Thanks for coming back. All right, something like that. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, 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 I'
in here. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, I'm gonna pull this end down. Uh, so one of the things that I just want to point out because this has come up before, as I do uh, this this kind of detail where I'm I'm using and reusing uh, the same geometry in this case these beams over and over again. Uh, if at all possible, I want to keep the containers parallel to the geometry inside. That makes it very easy to do things like uh, you know scale or resize in the direction of the beam. If I exploded this out and realigned my group outside, so if I was to say, you know, explode that and then make it a group. All right, now my group is parallel to my, my world axis, which I guess some people might like that because aligning it's easier. But if I want to make a change to this, it's not quite as simple as it was before, where I can't just grab the, the container and move it along the axis of itself. Now everything's aligned. So if I did something like that and scaled it, I'll get some serious deformation by, by doing that. That's too much. That's just too much whimsy, man. <laughs> Pull out. Too much whimsy. Over whimsied. That's is what that is. Mm -hmm. take You're that. just overdoing it. That's right. Cool. Something like that. Chris said in the SketchUp Zoo, no one gets coffee. Ooh. That's Actually, a bad idea. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because uh so I was I was a little jittery earlier. I'm actually five days of no coffee right right now. Um in the detox phase still. Well, I, it's been kind I I so I, I replaced my coffee with green tea matcha to sound totally like a snotty jerk um <laughs> just to take the edge off and I, I gotta say it's been going it's been going pretty good um i'm not opposed to coffee by any means but i do find that uh if i try to limit my coffee i generally when i really need it <laughs> when i'm really struggling uh <laughs> it has a bigger impact on me if i don't drink it every single day or multiple times every single day which is kind of maybe hmm. where i was at wean it off so you can get that tolerance working for you instead of against you that's right i need i need to become weak weak to the caffeine so i have a question about this matcha so you, do you use the powder i haven't uh this week i just i just got some uh green tea, tea matcha bags? packets yeah yeah tea bags that's okay cool pretty nice so far but i do want to try the actual powder and you know because they can stick it in different kinds of milk and froth it up and Mm -hmm. it's a whole scene man yeah yeah my wife likes the uh the powder with uh the oat milk yeah yeah there you go. get a little cinnamon in there okay mm. get a little nutmeg and mm. then a little almond extract whoa believe it or not Next and level. uh this brings it to another level yeah i like it so i like all those thoughts this is my homemade uh homemade matcha recipe See, something else people don't expect to get here on SketchUp Live, but uh, yeah, you're walking away with a free matcha recipe. <laughs> yeah, no cost to you. No. Like it or not, you got that. All right, you got so... it and you can't forget it. <laughs> Good, you can try. <laughs> you probably will try. Um, so I'm, without getting too, uh, you know, graphic card e here, uh, I'm just copying these pieces around and I'm intentionally not being super critical. I'm just kind of trying to trace this shape uh, with my beams. So get them about to where they should be. Um, I might actually grab this guy. I don't like how he's causing some Z fighting here. So I'm gonna take him back out and just have him butt up against the edge. Yeah, no fighting, no Z fighting. No Z fighting. What does that sign say? No bare feet. What does that okay. sign say? No Z fighting. What does that mean? You owe me, you owe me one gumball machine. <laughs> Somebody pick up that blood. <laughs> um, well, that just happened. Yeah. Oh, we can keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Ralph says, no coffee. You're crazy. It's the nectar of the gods. I, I have to agree with you, Ralph. Got to have it. I can't just go. I, I drink tea during the day, but uh, got to have coffee in the morning. Got to jumpstart your day somehow. Start off on the right foot. Um, so. Hey, I'm, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. I'm not like, uh, you know, I'm not going to judge anybody because they drink coffee. I just know that uh, once I start drinking too much. It's a thing. You're so. not going to look. I, I could have sworn that I saw you driving past Starbucks the other day, just scowling at everyone in line, doing loops around. Oh, yeah. I give them oh. the fingers I drive by, but I don't I don't <laughs> judge people face to face. <laughs> right. OK. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is looking pretty slick. I, I'm, I'm what are we an hour in right now? I like I like the way this is going. Um, I'm just going to add a couple more of these these vertical stud study members stu stud study not like study like studying but like studly st studish members there we go at the corners there and then we can get another couple uh angled guys right here take that whoa oh that's the end of it that's where it ends that is the end this is the end, my friend. This is the end. Yeah, didn't have a sound clip for that one, did you? Oh, shoot. Had to go acapella on it. <laughs> oh, I can always bring the, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> quality, quality, <Homie. laughs> quality sound design right there. Thank you very much, Matt. Oh. I am back. Um. All right. No, that's looking cool. That is coming together. All right. Um, down here, down below, uh, I'm going to take this guy and actually, I'll just stretch him out. There's no need to bring another piece down. We'll just have him run through the ground. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Bring it straight down. Like I said, got to have good support in your life or else, um, you know. You're in trouble. Um, Ralph, this makes me think maybe if you have a, a super special, super good hot drink recipe, drop it in the chat. Spread the love of the uh, warm drinks. But Ralph says, packet of coffee, packet of hot chocolate, two soft peppermint candies, dash of cayenne pepper, hot water, one scoop vanilla ice cream on top. Hot dog, baby. You got a nice drink going. <laughs> Holy cow. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain to you the state I'm in at when I wake up in the morning. That's about <laughs> those, the those, at night. <laughs> those seven steps are six steps too many. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of liked actually going to the green tea matcha just tea packets because that meant I had to boil water in the pot and drop a thing in. I didn't even have to like pour grounds into anything. It was less steps. That mm -hmm. does that sounds like a lot, but that does sound awful good. That. Yeah, if you're making Ralph, then I'll take one for sure. That's right. Bring bring those. Bring that. Bring that to, to base camp, and uh, yes. I will I will help help have one with you for sure. <laughs> I'll help you set up a lemonade stand type That's deal. Right. All right, so we got some kind of uh... loop de swoop. Yeah, exactly. Well, support dealies is what I was going to say, but loop de swoop works just as well. Well, this one can be the loop de swoop, and then one on the other side can be a support dealie. Nice. I like it. Teamwork. I'm going to make that a group. And I'm going to grab that and copy it straight over here. So, one of the things I like about this, so uh, I mentioned that before, we do a lot of different. Uh, kinds of modeling here on SketchUp Live. Uh, one of my favorite things to do still is doing that. Uh, um, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that was tea and not, uh, you didn't just run to the bathroom with your headset still on. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that or not. Yep, I am pouring out of my, out of my tea cup, out of my tea kettle. Or no, it's not a Chico. What is it called? Uh, diffu infuser? I don't know. 
I have no it's idea. Teapot. What about, so yeah. it's a teapot. It's not a toilet. That's it. Really, <laughs> all that really matters is that it's not a toilet. <laughs> um, Actually, once I if I once I do get a toilet for my uh, home office, then that's really we're going to be stepping up the game. Wow! Now the, I can work all day and never leave my desk. The productivity is just going to be <laughs> mind-boggling. Uh, the bosses are going to be proud. That's right. Wow. Let's keep this up. Commitment. All right. <laughs> I'm going to make this a component. All right. And I'm going to take that. Stick one over here. Copy that. Drop it right here. And then... Actually, it was, we got it close enough. I'll just uh, manhandle this thing into place now. Get it on the green axis. Grab it there. And then pull it back here. Oh, that's cool. I'll take nice. that option, copy it over here. Boom. Uh, no, I was saying that uh, I really do like the machine part modeling that we do. Um, it is a lot of fun to to get something a finished piece and go wow it's it's perfect it's exact uh but there's there's definitely something fun to doing something like this too where it's uh you know a lot more just kind of go with the flow and almost like sculpting i talked to, we've done we've done a couple of sessions where we've done uh organic modeling where you sub d or something like that and same thing where you're, you're you don't have exactly what you need to end up with but you kind of get to play around uh it's pretty cool it's fun yeah, digital clay, sort That's of. That's right. Um, Marcus, this has been like praise Aaron day. We got, I love your skill builders. Hey, thanks. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I am. I'm so happy, happy, happy. <laughs> thanks, buddy. I, I honestly do appreciate hearing that. That's great. We'll keep putting them out. Well, you're, you'll keep making them. <laughs> You'll keep putting them out. I'll I'll just, uh, watch them. Um, Lawrence says uh, that he drinks about two pints of Earl Grey tea every day. I have to say, I respect that. I love a little Earl Grey, a little bergamot oil, right? Um, Wait, what, what's what's booger monk? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but bergamot? Is that right? Uh it's like a type of oil that you can put on Earl Grey tea. I don't know, at least the Earl Grey tea I get. You gotta get the real deal. You don't need the uh, the fake scent they put on. The real deal uh, oil is the best. Um, I did not know there was a, an oil you put on Earl Grey. That's, that is new to me. Oh, I don't like add it myself. It's already like, I guess you, you probably could source it and put it on yourself, but... Uh, Gives a little sort of like licorice-y type flavor, but not in a bad way. I don't really like licorice, black licorice, but burger mo. Did I pronounce it? That's what Andy says. I buy it. All right. I'm going with you. It's the only right. one I got. Um, and Bradley Design in the chat here says, uh, I'm rolling with a cup of Yogi Green Tea Passion Fruit Matcha, giving thanks for unknown blessings that are already on the way. I like that. I like, I like all of that. That was That was fun. Yeah, if I do love the uh, the Yogi tea has the little on the little tab of the bag has, you know, little inspirational sayings. And uh, I think I actually have that exact same uh, tea in my tea cabinet, tea cupboard. I don't know what, what exactly they call it. It's just a, I open up a door in my kitchen. There's a bunch of tea in there. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah, then uh, let's call it a cabinet or a cab cabinet of tea. All right, we're gonna do this door in its own context. So I could, so this is a spot where I could go in and I could grab those pre-made beams and I could flatten them down to make planks and do that. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is just kind of, uh, you know, get, get kind of a little more free with this. Um, I'm gonna have some pieces going across like that. And then on the inside of that, I'm going to just make this, I'm going to model this monolithically. 
should have done this like this. So I have these horizontal pieces holding some boards together. I'll grab that, drag that straight down. Same thing here. All right. Ah, this is great. A lot of tea talk in the chat. Yogi tea is the Don says, Paul, Hey, I, you know, I love a Yogi tea. I like a Tao of teas, make some good tea. Harney and sons, wonderful teas. Um, and then of course, you, you know, you go to your local tea shop and, uh, you just get some loose leaf. Um, just try something new out, you know? Well, you know, celestial seasoning is real big out here. Yeah, it's isn't it real close by over there? Right? It is right in Gun Barrel. Yeah, it's a popular local favorite. Mm -hmm. I heard the tour there is very good. Like you go to the factory tour. I've never been, but I have. I have. Uh, I have smelled the place. It is. It's. It's powerful in its aroma. In a good way, or in like a Purina. Depends Purina on how you pet factory. Yeah, that place stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, in Denver, in Denver, there's the Purina factory that makes like dog food. And it's uh, every time you drive by it, it's bad. It's Big hard, time bad. hard not to notice that one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But the tea place you're saying is positive in the spectrum of smells compared I, to that. I would say so. I'd say it's 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 a, it can be strong smelling. But, you know, if you've ever been to a uh, a brewery, you know, mm -hmm. even people who like beer, sometimes a brewery is like. It could be a little strong, you know, get a little, little, there's so such thing as too much of a good thing. And there's uh if you consider hops, a good thing. You can't have too much of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar experience to me. I've been to a bar where you can sort of smell the sticky floor and that I don't care for that either. So. <laughs> yeah. I think I've, I've been to a brewery where they, they had the same air freshener. Yeah. <laughs> no, not the yeah. ideal thing there. Nice. Well, that's a cool looking, uh, cool looking door pretty quick. We threw a door together pretty quick here. Uh, ramshackle look. Uh, I'm going to throw a couple of bolts on here. I'm going to use circles. Low poly again. I'm just going to use uh, eight of them, eight sides. And what I'll do is I'll grab this, make this into a component. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that out just a little bit. And I'm going to offset that, grab that front and pull that out on the green axis or the blue axis oh the blue axis that'll that'll work way better okay there we go there we go and if i wanted to I'd come in here and again it may make it smooth all right since all of these pieces are in plane i can just copy and paste that on plane and i'll just throw Couple of these Are you using the stamp board. command here? Oh, I should be. You know, it's funny because we get these awesome new new commands every once in a while. And not, not, it doesn't happen a lot. This last version had three or four new, brand new commands. And I just get so used to do it using the same commands I always use that I'm like, oh, I forgot to use that awesome new thing. Dang it. All yeah, right. well, let that be a lesson to you out there. Yeah, don't be like Aaron. Yeah, be a new dog. Speaking of Purina, uh, Paul's got the masala chai. I like that. Um, Keggy says the gin factory in Wandsworth, London, is really smelly, as is the Mars factory in Slough. Slow? Slow? Slough? Slough. I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, like the original uh, office was in Slough, wasn't it? I believe that's correct, yeah. That's the only reason I know that name. But uh, Ricky Gervais, good stuff. Yeah, it's a good, good reason. Um, yeah, factories tend to not have uh, not great smells, unfortunately. But uh, that's the price of doing business in the after the Industrial Revolution, I suppose. Wow, that got uh, almost educational for a second there. <laughs> We're getting historical today, baby. <laughs> I'm saying baby too much. I'm, that's not good that's negative maybe i don't know um trying to use up all my new sounds that i've got in here let's see what we got here 
I'm talking about Mountain Dew, baby. Oh, that that's could have gone into the drinks. That's another baby, baby. <laughs> Maybe that's where I got it from. Too many of my sounds have baby at the end. Little tags on the end. But um, Mountain Dew, there's another good warm drink. Yeah, it's too much. Sorry, I meant, I meant that my ring. My ring was too big. <laughs> okay. That's too much. That's enough out of you. Shut up. <laughs> Let's play the quiet game, Matt. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, I'm going to grab that. Give that a good hard soften. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, okay. Leave you the way you were. I sort of like the unsoftened. It's the more, you know, it's the low poly look. It is. I am partial to like sort of early 3D, you know, PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64 kind of graphics where the. I get that. Yeah. The low polyness comes through but uh to do so i'm gonna make the, i want to make this ring bigger so i'm gonna grab the inside face of the ring and scale that about one corner modifier key to skate the middle just to make that ring a little bit just a touch fatter there we go mm, cool it's like a good little door pull door pull all right uh i do want to get another one of these guys in here so i'm going to grab this Option copy that and maybe we'll throw it right right here. I mean I'm I'm this is not on the source material, but but I got the mouse, so you know what you can do. Keep going. Keep making it making it fun. I like that look. That was cool. All right. Um yeah, so like this, like I said, this was a lot of the detail that I wanted to, to get in. I'm gonna throw a window up here, and then maybe something here. This ended up very small. They do have little tiny windows on here, but maybe, maybe if I shift that up a little bit, and take that up also. There we go. Now grab these guys, scale those up, baby. <laughs> baby! Right. That's better. Oh, wrong baby. <laughs> no. I, I did not expect that. That was a surprise to me. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get uh, a little little window up here. I kind of want to re. I kind of want to use this. Uh, maybe I will. I'll just go for a, what the, whoa. Whoa. Got very confused about what I was seeing just now. We're adding new tools all the time, like rectangle with one of the edges a little askew. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, con confused rectangle uh, <laughs> tool. Right, so I'm just going to, I feel like I got to do something else to this. So I'm, I am going to we'll offset this and pull this out Lawrence oh low poly like the money for nothing music video there you go yeah yeah that's pretty it's pretty spot on although primitive definitely has a certain aesthetic to it yeah, it sure does it's all about here aesthetics Let's squash that back in a little bit It'll let me. There's so many, so, so many snap points at this point. All right. This is a solid group. Over here, this is still a solid group, also. So I'm going to make a copy of this, bring it over here. I'll grab this guy, bring him over. I'll just bring it. I'm going to make a copy. I'm just going to bring it over and then. Uh, Take this, swing around 90 degrees, and then we will stick this inside the frame. I like it. That's going to work. And then, actually, I do. So I do want to make a copy. I lied before. Because what I'll do is I will take this piece, no, this piece right here, and I will. 
uh, go to my tools, my solid tools, and I will subtract that from this. Oh boy, I subtract too much. I over subtracted. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this might come up. This this happens sometimes. Uh, solid tools is all about making solids. So sometimes you lose voids when you do certain commands. Subtract is one that does that. So what do you do in that case? Well, here's what I could do. I can grab this face, which is just the face of the mesh, and I can right click and I can say intersect face with model. And that's gonna show me, this is, this is the intersection where it hits that. So what I could do now, oh, come on, man. Oh, no. All right. Oh. I'll just do this quick. Just one time like this. And I'll grab these guys right here. Option copy them here. Oh, I should be stamping. There we go. Here. Nice. Here we go. Here. Here. I just want that to Perfect. break that. Because that's this is really all I need out of all that mess. I need this piece right here. I don't care about that. This piece then I can just give a little bit of depth to. There are times, and and I, I mean, I'm talking about me right now, so don't don't anybody get offended like I'm calling out their workflow, but there are times where I will get so hung up about trying to make the process perfect that I put aside just getting it done. It doesn't matter if solid tools works perfectly. It doesn't matter if some other tool, you know, functions the way I want it to function. It doesn't really make a difference. What matters is at the end, I get this shape that I have on the screen. Um, so just saying that if anybody out there is like me and they get all hung up on something not being properly, perfectly detailed, that kind of thing. All right, that's a cool little window up there. And I kind of feel like I want to cut a corner here and maybe copy that. Copy that. Copy that. Copy that. That oh, boy. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're, we, we are definitely vary, varying a little bit from what uh, the, the source material looks like, but I kind of wanted to reuse that mesh. I like the way that looks. Um, and I like the way that the front of this building turned out. This does look pretty cool. Uh, I feel like I have to grab one of these and stick it over here. Run that back to the corner. Chris asked about your shirt. Any meaning behind today's shirt, Aaron? Oh. All right. Anybody listening want to tell them what it means? We covered it earlier. Who's who is paying attention? <laughs> Ooh, Keggy, uh, Triple D fan. Or 3D, I should say. That's quickly becoming a five donut model right there, he says. Oh yeah. Hey, what what's uh what's triple D, Matt? Oh yes, of course. It's plugs time again. Uh <laughs> you're tuned into the right spot because it's plug time for 3D, aka D D and D, aka Donuts, Design and Debate, our podcast that we do, Aaron and I together. Um so Every uh, week, or every two weeks, I should say, we um, we bring up a topic, and then we debate whether or not it's good design or not. So we've talked about products. We've talked about you know minimalism as an idea. We've talked about um, you know a specific building, uh, the Museum of the Future in Dubai. So but we have sort of a wide range of topics, and uh, we've also been bringing on guests uh, recently. So uh, was it in last? Not this past Wednesday, but one Wednesday ago, we had a professor on to talk about um, retro rebranding. You know, um, when brands go back to previous iterations of their of their branding. Um, anyways, there's a lot of interesting topics, and uh, the the hook, the the fun part about it is that the live audience gets to uh, vote on which side of the debate they agree with more. So at the end, we have five different categories, and then the audience debates is this or uh, votes is this good design or not and then if it is good design it gets one donut 
So the top score, uh, as Keggy alluded to, is five donuts. We haven't had a five donut design yet. Hasn't happened yet. But uh, next Wednesday, we have a footwear designer on to talk about Crocs. <sighs> Probably a little too controversial to get a five donut uh, score, but hey, we'll see if the arguments are good enough. Um, so that's on Crowdcast. Um, uh, io. You can look on the YouTube videos that have the the link to to that, um, or you can just go to crowdcast.io, search for SketchUp, and uh, yeah, just punch in your email, and then you'll get a reminder when we go live on Wednesday. So, yeah, tune in. We'd love to see you there. Uh, obviously, you like the live shows, and um, you get to see some heated debate about Crocs footwear. Yeah, and I, I I have yet to meet a person who doesn't have an opinion about Crocs specifically. Um. I've noticed that. Do you own a pair of Crocs? I did. I, well, I don't want to sour anybody with my opinion. So I used to own a pair of Crocs. I don't now. And that's all I'm going to say about it until Wednesday. <laughs> okay. You have to tune in to find out the full story behind Aaron's Crocs. That's right. I'll probably wait to the end of the debate too. So we, we, we uh, yeah, it might be an after story, which is actually one of the cool things. If you guys listen to our podcast uh, when it's broadcast, we watch, you can watch some people watch it here on YouTube. Some people download it as a podcast. But if you come to the live recording, we do a little bit of a pre and post show, too. So what we share in the actual broadcast is not always the full story. You have to hang out for the post show on uh, Crowdcast to find out more about what that what's really going on. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a little peek behind the curtain. That's right. The true feelings. That's right. All right. Um, um Real quick, back to the shirt. Yes. A bunch of people in the chat identified it's a log. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's true. And Chris says he came in late, so he missed that first part. Hey, no problem at all. Drop by whenever you can, but uh, oh, it's a big big time log there. That's that's everything that there is to say about that. <laughs> all right. Um, you know, I'm feeling like there's other pieces I want to dive into, but uh, I wanted to... You, to spend about the same amount of time on it that Tyson did. And he 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 was a little over an hour and a half and he kind of said, I'm going to call it there. So I think I'm going to try to do the same thing and, and be about done now. Um, we got a good amount of detail on there. We got some some cool pieces and uh, we still have a little bit to go. Obviously, we have uh, the rest of this up here to happen. And then there's some stuff back here that's going to be pretty close to exactly the same as what we got over here, I think. Uh, possibly even copying the pieces from this and just plunk them on here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. that, that may happen off camera. That's kind of it's kind of dull. You know, this should, yeah. this, you should get in the wall. There we go. Um, well, it definitely is starting to look like a place that I would get like a, you know, I get a, a quest or yeah, something. Oh, for sure. I would meet with a band of of magical individuals and yeah. Try to take down a dragon or something like that. Yeah, this is definitely uh yeah, the dragon inn or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um for sure. Yeah. This is this is the place you would go and uh get some mead, uh meet up with a ranger or something, maybe. So yeah, this this is where <laughs> we're at now. <laughs> cool. I like it. Um yeah, I'm gonna call it there. I'm gonna I'm gonna be done for today. I, I like that. I feel like I could get into doing some more detail, but uh it would be repetitive at this point. Um and I don't know, you know, there's more more to be gotten out of just doing that again. So let's call it here. Uh next week, Tyson will be back in this same model working on some more. I, I have a feeling Tyson's gonna take the lighthouse, the the piece at the top. You know, get that get that tower looking pretty cool. There's some cool options up there uh, for some nice detail. Uh, so I'm excited to see what he does with that. Yeah. Uh, up top, yeah. you said you were the guy who brought the light. You're bringing, you know, but you didn't bring the light today. I guess not. I just got the light background, but not the light. Uh, That's right. Oh yeah. House. Oh yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to save it right now and send it to Tyson with this white background just to be a jerk. <laughs> Burn. Ooh, that'll do it. <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, yeah, cool. So, hey, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. This was a lot of fun. Uh, just a couple things to call out. Again, Matt, Matt mentioned these things, but I just want to bring it back around in case anybody missed it. Do come by, hang out with us on Wednesday. There's a link that just got dropped, uh, Crowdcast. We will be talking with a shoe designing professional 
about Crocs and how they fit in as design. Like where, where do they where do they rank? Uh, so that'll be worth checking out. And we we talked about it a little bit. If you haven't already purchased, uh, it's a good time to get a ticket to 3D Basecamp. It's going to happen no matter what. We're going to do it. Uh, and I can't remember how long the discounted pricing happens, but it's not forever. So uh, always a good time to buy it. Prices are just going to go up as time goes by. If you use my full name, Aaron Dietzen, when you're buying, you get a discount. So it'll knock a few bucks off there. A couple few bucks, actually. Uh, so join us. 3D Basecamp is well worth worth the trip. Uh, it's a great place to learn and talk and hang out and just sketch up. It's just all sketch up. So um, other your, than that, uh, yeah. It's 150 off, right? The, your code? I think it's 150 off. Yeah. So whatever ticket you want to buy, if it's all access for the full week, you want to just come in for base camp or just uh, do some hands-on training boot camp at the beginning of the week, 150 off of any ticket type. So yeah, check that out. It's good stuff. Yeah, um, absolutely. Gonna yeah. be a great time. A lot of great 3D going on there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gregory asked how much uh, how much additional work would be to clean this up and make it a 3D printable file. <laughs> uh, this particular file is definitely not. I, I generally when I model, I do try to model everything as solids and. Uh, if at all possible, a 3D printable full solid when it, when I can. Uh, this piece is definitely not made with that in mind. Each of these pieces, every single piece is a separate piece right now. Uh, some of these are solids, some of them are not. So merging them together might not be too bad because I might, might be able to do an outer shell. So any of these that are not, so this guy right here, See, he was used a bunch, but he's not a solid right now. So there'd be some cleanup that would have to happen to get that piece solid, which it's a component. So that's not a ridiculous request, uh, but it would be possible. Outer shell can do some awesome things. Uh, it would just be a matter of outer shell, outer shell, outer shell, outer shell over and over again until you get all the pieces together. But it could it could definitely happen. Mm -hmm. Not something probably we would do on a stream because not it, as pretty to look at as <laughs> it's freehand. A, yeah, cool. So. It's a little grindy, to be honest, but it's it is definitely doable. So this this yeah. could be saved. This could end up as a three D printable in the end. Maybe it'll happen. We'll see. The cool yeah. thing is, we with most of these models, we end up throwing these up on three D warehouse. So one could go after that themselves. So if you want to be one, <laughs> it's it's available to you. Could be you. Could be one you. A million. You could be the one. The one. <laughs> Call you Neo. All right. Well, on that point, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and call this. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was a lot of fun. This is a, a fun model to work on. I'm excited to see what happens next, what Tyson's going to do with it next week. Um, please come back next Friday. Watch that. It's going to be a good time. And we're going to get this all done at the end of the month. The end of the month, we'll have the full model. Uh, we'll make it available for download through 3D Warehouse, and you guys can whatever you want, paint it, render it, print it. It'll be yours to do with what you like. Uh, yeah, until then, uh, I'm Aaron. Thank you guys. Thank you, Matt, for hanging out with us. And yeah. uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Have a great weekend, folks. Wow. I love you.